you have three kids? Three. Three, three kids. And you've said that you're not leaving your kids any money. Any money. No, not. Have you given them anything up to this point? Oh, yeah. Well, I put them to school, education. Okay. Uh, and once they graduated from school, then what? Yeah. Uh, Nothing? Well, occasionally when they get in, as all kids do, get in trouble, <laughs> we've helped them. Okay. Uh, the, um, uh, one of the saddest days of my life, county jail uh, over here, Los Angeles County Jail, which I uh, was in a few times, unfortunately. One of my two sons, our two sons, went to county jail for being drunk and intoxicated and fighting, and they were thrown in the same bloody cell block that I was in 30 years before it broke my heart. See, kids don't do what you tell them to do. Kids do what they see you do. And our children, our daughter doesn't think this way. Our, our boys think, well, dad got in a lot of trouble and was very successful, made a lot of money. So we're going to follow in his footsteps. Get in a lot of trouble. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, but we, we, all the stuff that we've taught our children is exactly the stuff that's free on my website. We have a thing called QLA for dummies. For the meathead, this is the first thing you do. The second thing you do, the third, fourth, fifth, um, and um, as I told you again before we started, I had two board meetings yesterday where we uh, pretty much made two young kids, 122 and 137, I think John is, instant millionaires with commercial debt, motivated seller, one in Northern California, one in Southern California buying health care facilities. Nice. Okay, now, you don't think about creating multi-generational wealth in terms of having to pin your name, continue to grow through your children, and, you know, like, for example, how, how Trump does it. Like, Trump's kids are inheriting his businesses and running parts of his businesses and are going to ultimately inherit all of his money. No, no, you don't care about I, that. No, no, and I think if you ask the president to do, if, would he would do this over again, I think he'd say no. Because the president and my, we have big footprints. And it puts a lot of pressure on kids. And uh, although the president's kids seem to be holding up, uh, my kids uh, seem to be holding up, uh, it's early days. It's early days. Uh, Andrew Carnegie uh, and um, Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich said, the best thing that you can leave your children is in the state of poverty for them to make it themselves. Yeah, I mean, I grew up poor. You know, I'm first generation immigrant. You grew up poor. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when you look at the Bill Gates, Bill Gates did not grow up poor, mm -mm. but he became way richer. <laughs> Compared to how rich he is now, you could say he grew up poor. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, same thing with Warren Buffett and so forth. What they've accomplished with... with dwarfs. With with dwarfs, had. whatever whatever they had. Um, you said something interesting. You said, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Correct. Explain that. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Who are you around the first seven or eight years of life? A mom, maybe a dad, maybe one grandparent, maybe an older sibling, right? What do they know about programming kids to be high performance? Nothing. Mm -hmm. They teach you to love they may teach us some religion, but if love and religion got the job done, we wouldn't have all the problems we've got. They don't get the job done. So now once you're past seven or eight, and when, when a kid's three years old, other than to change a diaper, they're pretty happy. They're laughing. Three months, six months, nine months, three years, five years, kids are pretty happy. Then as they get exposed to the educational system and they get exposed to other people other than their immediate family, they change. They change. Some people say uh, the world gets them down, okay? Uh, once you're a teenager and older, you're the average of the five or six buddies that you hang with. I ask all the universities, I ask all the people that I talk to, would you want your kids to grow up like your, and be like your friends? Almost everybody says no. Would you like your kids to grow up and be like you? Almost everybody says no. Would you like your kids to grow up and be like your parents? Almost everybody says no. Normally they say fuck no, okay? Now, if they're saying they don't want you to be like them, they don't want their kids to be like their parents, what is that telling you? Okay. And uh, the, uh, show me your friends. Uh, I tell kids the easiest way to get clean, not clean from drugs, change your phone number, move to another part of the United States or the world, and start over. Yeah. Clean. Yeah, I did that at 29. 
At 29 years old, I moved from the Bay Area to New York, started completely fresh. Yeah. Best well, when move. I came back from the military, I was starting completely fresh. Yeah, best move I ever made. Yeah. My mom said I was running away from responsibility and wasting my life. No one really understood why I did what I did. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and when you really talk to people, you know, because I have a, a page called Last Stocks, and we talk about, you know, people say, well, you know, where I am, you know, what should I do? Because where I live doesn't have a lot of uh, opportunities. And I said, well, just move then. He goes, oh, well, it's not that easy. Well, it is that easy. Correct. You're not a tree. Yeah. <laughs> you could get up and, and, and walk over someplace else. But Correct. What do you think stops people from doing that? Oh, uh, uh, they, they, lack of self-confidence. Mm. Nobody, they don't want to fail. They don't want to fail. And m most people care about what other people think, other people say. I, I, it's astonishing to me that on Facebook, you, a, a person can get like 20 dislikes or whatever you call it, unlikes on Facebook, and they commit suicide. Are you kidding me? How is that possible? What, what has happened to the world? Um, and the, uh, I grew up, my dad said, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. It's just the opposite now, okay? Uh, and, the, um, I, 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 and I came from, you know, a lot of people had a lot of bad shit to say. Uh, and, uh, but in those days, you stepped out in the parking lot, whoever was standing after they were done with the discussion, and then you forgot about it. But now they go online. Facebook, or they have they actually start campaigns on social media to discredit people, and uh, and there's haters now, uh, which is another thing that's hard for me to believe. It's not hard for me to believe that the people hate. It's hard for me to believe that they anybody cares about the haters, but there's a lot of them. Yeah, I've always said that internet bullying isn't a real thing. Like if you really are bothered by it, all you have to do is just leave the internet. Yeah. Not log in. Yeah. And it's over. Correct. I think people want to be engaged in that type of behavior. They think they're going to maybe change yeah. that type of behavior. And that type of behavior is not going to change. 